Johnny Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Donnie Brook at 7 o'clock, right? As opposed to 9 p.m. on a school night. We'll get into that about soccer before this show is over. But first, let's meet the panelists, starting with Wendy Weiss from the Big 550 KTRS. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Riverfront Times founder Ray Hartman from Substack. And from the St. Louis American, we welcome Alvin Reed, where he's a columnist and editor. All right, Bill, we're going to start with you. It turns out that Dean Plocker, the Speaker of the House and the General Assembly in Jefferson City, uh, double dipped. He went on some road trips to Hawaii and Philadelphia airfare hotels, and uh, he billed the state for that and was personally reimbursed. It turns out the Missouri Independent discovered that Speaker Plocker was also reimbursed um, by his campaign. So he was reimbursed twice, about four or $5,000. It's not, you know, seven figures, but it's still a transgression. He has since written checks to the state to try and cover their losses. My question is, is he going to survive this? He's running for lieutenant governor, as right. you know. No, sure, he, he should survive this. This is Jefferson City. I mean, as far as sins go, this is not a big one at all. I mean, we have an attorney general who won't uh, help prosecute Steve Tilly and the illegal gambling machines. We have all sorts of things going on, and this guy just double-dipped a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't think that in the scale of things this amounts to anything. Well, on the scale of things, I can tell you, when I was at the Arkansas Gazette in the early 90s, uh, the attorney general, longest-serving attorney general, uh, a gentleman named Steve Clark, announced that he was going to run for governor. And at that time, Bill Clinton had announced pretty much he was going to run for president, but Bill Clinton was governor. Well, a week later, our newspaper reported that he, his office had spent a lot of money on travel and meals, including a lot of dinners and meals with people who they then contacted and said, like, I never had lunch or dinner with Steve <laughs> Clark. And uh, we came to the estimation that he had pretty much written down everybody who had worked at the Arkansas Gazette, including myself, um, on one of these, like, one of his little lunch vouchers. Now, this added up to the tune of 100 some odd thousand dollars But, Bill, the amount doesn't matter. This is theft, plain and simple. And I think this will haunt him. I think this will cost him any real chance of winning well, I, well, his, his, his enemies in the party will make a big deal out of it. That's right. But I, 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 like I, Kevin I McCarthy. Think. No, this, this will definitely be something that his opponents will feast upon for a little while, but I don't think this kind of money is going to have any traction when we're used to some of the figures that we that we do hear about in headlines. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. And, well, and the accusation that he's dishonest. Well, and I it, mean, that, that doesn't have a lot of... Well, right, uh, that everyone's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's it. It. You've got to look at... Or Washington, D.C. <laughs> you got to look at this with a little perspective, and this is the... The MAGA wing of the party is what's really out for him. I mean, he's... Way he, you know, Dean Plocker is one of those many politicians, kind of along the lines of Eric Schmidt, who you once knew in St. Louis and thought, you know, he's kind of a moderate to conser conservative, but moderate conservative like Schmidt was. And then they go and they just act like they lost their minds because they got to like bow at the altar of MAGA. But the interesting thing is, these all this pearl clutching by the MAGA folks, these are the same people that are completely loyal, and I don't want to go too far to this. To Donald Trump, they talk. We're comparing uh, essentially double billing, which is a serious matter. With I'm sorry, insurrection, stealing government secrets. I mean, to have the same people, like say, well, that's okay. He's the greatest president. It's like they have no sense of proportion, and mm -hmm. and I think but, but well, like that'll. Affect, I don't think. I think mm -hmm. that'll. Like, I, I think that'll uh, insulate. Sociologists and, and like psychologists say in a bizarre kind of way, people have more respect for the poor guy that robs the liquor store than people who 
steal a white collar money because at least that guy really needed the money. And that's how I look at it. Like, why are you doing this other than you're really a dishonest person? But hang yeah, on a second. Isn't it plausible? Because his wife is the campaign yeah, treasurer. Right. She wrote or got reimbursed, she reimbursed checks not knowing that he would ask for it. And he asked for reimbursement from the state, not knowing what she'd done. Maybe the left hand didn't know what the right hand was. And, and at the very I, least, he's going to make a great politician because this is a sellable story. I mean, it really is. Oh, that's pretty thin. That's right? thin. Yeah. That's oh, thin. I will say this. I got, Charlie, some, I got some property okay. in Florida. Uh, uh, let's now. move along. <laughs> well, let's move along. And by the way, you wrote about this week in Substack, right? Say, okay. Can I say one little thing? I just think that it's too early to tell whether it'll survive because that's, it's almost like a little, version, no, a little version of what went on in Washington. It's going to be back and forth with the Democrats and stuff. But I, I, I you know, I think he's... Well said. Okay, mm. we, we move on to issue okay. number two. Wendy Weiss, uh, the Lift for Life Academy is a charter school run by Marshall Cohen. It's, uh, I believe, in South St. Louis, Soulard perhaps. And it turns out there is a pot dispensary which is planning to open its doors about 150 feet from the door of where these kids are going to high school. Now, in Massachusetts, the pot dispensaries have to be 500 feet away from a school. Same is true in New York. In California, it's 1,000 feet. Don't you think these kids have enough challenges without walking into a school and being tempted by pot, which is just next door? No, I, I I mean I think I think that I think this is a I think this is a tempest in a teapot. I think I agree with Kara Spencer. Uh, it is legal now in the state of Missouri. So if there's a liquor store or if there's as we've had these conversations time and time again, I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I am not worried about my two-year-old grandson walking into a pot dispensary and making a purchase or my six-year-old or, or what a teen a teen I mean, you're it, not it, worried about a teen they're buying going, pot no not i mean they're, if, really? they're, if they're going to buy pot it has nothing to do with proximity i mean they can buy it from a friend it as easily as they can walk into a dispensary so i think that this i i just i think this is mountain molehill tempest teapot mm. i'd like to add to what you said by saying no. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like the difference between 150 feet and 500 feet is, I think, kind of immaterial. And, and I don't think that, you know, I, I don't think we should be taking lightly that we don't want young people, you know, exactly. smoking pot. But, but this doesn't, how the proximity of a place that would, in fact, get shut down for serving high school kids, and should, by the yeah, way. Right. I, I, the the proximity probably, no, is a liquor store. It's, you know what? This the is like of, trying to, the rest like, of the state, like the kids don't know prod exists. I mean, come the on. The rest of the just state doesn't. has the distances, but the city of St. Louis Dis said we don't need any distances. You and don't. And I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand that. What why why does New York do? and California, Massachusetts have these what I consider progressive regulations when it comes to trying to keep kids away from something that's illegal for them. I get and it, in St. Louis, we decide, oh, well, why don't you even sell it on the campus? Uh, well, so maybe, maybe we're a little ahead of these places, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe. I, I mean, I, yeah. know, I, I agree I don't completely, think so. completely I, I, with Wendy that th there's a liquor store right there now. Right. I mean, the, the kids can't walk in and buy liquor because they're high school kids. And the same thing would be at the pot store. Or the dispensary is going to lose its license yeah, they, in, before the kids even out the door if they attempt to do anything. And they should. Anything. You know what this reminds me of? And, and Elvin, I know you have something to say, but you know, when these things pass, these vices, we have all these regulations on them, like the boat has to float in a moat and there's a loss limit. And, and then once the vice gets passed, all those regulations get chipped away, including the distance the pot dispensary has to be from the school. Elvin. Well, that's kind of what I was going to say, that I think this is being um, reactionary. I mean, because why, I mean, why did no one know that, you know, if it's going to be this distance, it could be that distance from a school and nobody took any action? I don't think there's anything you can do about it now unless you grand, they're grandfathered in. You, I don't think you can go over there and, you know, say you can't open unless it's not open. Or, I, I, I don't think it is open. I don't right. think it's open yet. They're still okay. going. So, in. so quite frankly, you know, this debate went on in De Pere, Dean Plokers. <laughs> Um, right. But, um, you know, I, I just think that if the city, if the mayor, if somebody decided I'm not going to have it, we're, you're going to have to move someplace else. I don't think they sue. Yeah, I think it's fine. There, there's plenty of room yeah. in St. Louis. Yes.
Okay, Alvin Reed, I want to ask you about Andrew Bailey. He's the Attorney General for the state of Missouri, and uh, there's been st some stories about him right now because the parent company of Doe Run uh, gave him a, not him, but a PAC supporting him, a political action committee supporting him, $50,000. This was after the Attorney General filed an amicus brief in favor of moving a personal injury lawsuit from federal court here to Peru. Now, Doe Run is in a lead business, and there are 1,400 or so children in Peru who claim to be injured by the operations there. Bailey says, hey, uh, you know, it's a Peru case, send the case to uh, Peru, but do you think it's a little hmm, unseemly that he gets money from the company that he's helping? Well, well, first of all, is fifty thousand enough graft for you all to be concerned? <laughs> yes, 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 actually, all right. yes. Um, no, this is—I mean, you get what you pay for, and they paid for this amicus brief, and they shuffled him fifty thousand dollars. And won't it's, you come home, Bill Bailey? It, you know? it, Andrew, <laughs> it's Andrew Bailey. No, but uh, you're right. It's—it's it's beyond. Outrageous. I mean, but it's it's the legalized bribery, legalized, I want to say, bribery that we have in our campaign finance. And of course, can you imagine if, if what Andrew Bailey would be doing prosecutorially if this was a Democrat? I mean, of you know, it's just so over the top. But but the interesting thing is in this incredible world of ours, it will not the only thing that matters to this guy right now is beating Will Sharf in the primary. And this is a guy that was, he, every time Will Scharf opens his mouth about something like this, he was a Greitens guy. They're, they're going to bring up, was it Confab they called, the, the, that he used this thing to destroy his emails. It, it's just, it, this is the kind of thing that should matter, but in a Republican but, primary, well, it won't. Ahead, and it's horrible, but it won't matter in a primary. Well, I was going to say that he, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you referred to earlier, Andrew Bailey recusing his office from the whole video slot machine Steve, thing. Steve Tilly, yeah. Steve, right, Steve Tilly. Um, and Doe Run's parent company came out and said, there's absolutely nothing wrong. There's nothing newsworthy about, you know, making a donation to, to politicians. Uh, I just, I, the arrogance of that statement, it's like, it's not up to you to decide whether it's newsworthy. <laughs> it's up to the people of Missouri to decide whether it's newsworthy. And this is newsworthy. Well, now, hang on, if I might jump in here. Where was your outrage? Why wasn't it horrible when Sam Page got money from Boeing after he led the charge to get Boeing tax breaks. Where was your outrage when Wesley Bell, who's running for U.S. Senate, was taking money and is taking money from trial lawyers who have business with his office? With, uh, great great but lawyers like Travis but, Noble but, but, and Scott uh, Rosenblum. No, no. None I, of I'm you not, guys were outraged well, about that. Actually, let me, let me ask, uh, Bill was the one. Wes, Wesley Bell on that. But the prosecutors in a prosecutorial race in St. Louis County that's the only people who really give money are, are the lawyers. No, they are. I, well, I mean, it's well, just the fact of it, Charlie. But, but, no, no, here's the difference. No, I shouldn't say this. corruption because that's a the, suable term. I'm the, but conflict of interest is conflict of interest. Bob McCullough well, Charlie, got money. He, West there's West also, got this is a state you office holder. You get money from that, the lawyers. That, that, hey, Charlie, can, Charlie I, can, I, can I say something? Charlie, it's it's about scale, too. So, for example, $50,000 doesn't mean anything to do a run, but it means a lot to most politicians. And if, believe me, and I think your point about Paige with, with Bowie is fine, but if it, if it's, a, no, no, but I'm saying, if it, and I'm not a Page fan. If it's, I don't know how much you gave him. If it's a thousand or five hundred, you know, that's it's got to be in proportion. I don't think there's many lawyers that are giving fifty thousand dollars to Wesley Bell. It's like three thousand. Yeah, and I mean that's, you know, so it, that's it, not going to affect anybody. And I look, I think in a perfect world, prosecutors wouldn't take money from any lawyers. But to so Bill's point, we've I don't already know established what you are. It's just the question of price. Well, Is that no, what you're saying? it's a pres It's a matter of scale. In other words, our system oh. allows it. No, our, it's not like everybody out there. In, in, our audience who gives uh, max okay. donations to politicians is doing something wrong or that the okay. politicians are wrong taking them. It's a matter when you start taking 50 grand, it's a different scale. Well, I want to ask you about Nikki Lachlan, who is a teacher in mm -hmm. St. James, Missouri, and she's up on charges right now, Ray, because uh -huh. she sent nude photos of herself to a 16-year-old. Right. Ordinarily, we wouldn't discuss this, mm -hmm. but in our pre-show meeting, you happen to mention that you think that she's being overcharged in this case. A bit. I mean, I'll be clear. If you're on the school board, you know, you're the principal, it's an automatic dismissal. No church of the second chance. Whatever pro due process. I don't think there's much question that that's... And I'm not going to in any way minimize this. I think 
in a world we have this, and I don't know the specifics, but from reading the RFT, which let, has the first Let me turn. just jump in here, and right. I'll, I'll give you the charges. Okay. According to Newsweek, yeah. attempted statutory rape, right. possession of child pornography, tampering with a witness, tampering with physical evidence, promoting obscenity in the first degree, and furnishing pornographic materials to a minor. And the RFT also had mentioned, and I don't know who's accurate, of tra tra trafficking, child trafficking, the child porn charges. I think, you know, this young woman apparently needs some help. There's no question about that. I don't know when you look at how much else is out there in our youth sports and schools and stuff. This is not obviously it's bad, but it really diminishes our seriousness about child porn, which is a monstrous problem, and and trafficking, which is a monstrous problem. This isn't that, okay? And I don't think those charges in this case, obviously the stat attempted statutory rape, some of those are fine, but but the idea of we're talking about this as a child porn or a trafficking case is really, I think, just mm. over the top. Well, well, Ray, I mean, the, the way the system will work is they pile charges onto a person and then the person decides to plead guilty and and they drop four of the charges and you plead the two i mean well i uh, that's fine but i still don't think this is a child porn case and i don't think it's a trafficking case well, i think I, it's I, a I clearly it is a child porn case I mean, yeah, but it is was that's a child what i somebody under i get it and i don't think it is i'm sorry i just i but i do think child porn is a monstrous problem and it doesn't mm. help us to call and there's so much of this trafficking yeah. is the same way. Everything is trafficking. Well, it well, isn't. And we've had this needs to be focused. We've on. had this spate of female, young, attractive female educators crossing this line in in really egregious ways. And I think there's a tendency. We, you know, we forget, as you, Alvin, put so brilliantly in that pre-production meeting. If this was a guy. That's all you have to do. You just change the tables, reverse the tables. If this was a if this was a man preying on a 25-year-old man, preying on a 16-year-old girl, there would be no questions. There'd be no well, questions. I, I'd probably have the same thing about it. I don't think it'd be a child porn. I, again, it's not I'm not defending her conduct. I don't think right. it's child porn in that case either. I just don't. I don't think it's trafficking. I think those problems are so big and that I we think, diminish. I think there is a difference between a man doing it I don't. And, and a woman doing it. Uh, I do. I agree with Bill. Thank okay. you, Evan. Ray, I want to ask you about uh, what looks like a big schism now between two former political buddies, uh, the president of the Board of Aldermen in the city of St. Louis, Megan Green, and the mayor, Tashara Jones. First couple weeks ago, mm, President Green said that the jail director should uh, step down, and then the mayor de uh, defended her, Jennifer Clemens mm -hmm. Abdullah, her appointee to be the jail director. This week... Uh, President Green said that the mayor has reneged on her campaign uh, promises uh, to the homeless. Green wants a 30-day notice before homeless can be removed. She wants super encampments with 24-7 security and water and services. Uh, she's also looking to dial back some of the laws against aggressive panhandling. And the mayor is not interested, apparently, in that legislation. So there seems to be a little bit of a dissension rocking the boat. What do you think? I think it's a good thing. I mean, you want government to be, you know, uh, there was a lot of kumbaya moments after the election and stuff, but you want to be to have tension between the executive and the legislative branches, and that's how you get compromises worked out. I th Certainly in its early forms, the uh, homeless bill of rights, I thought had some aspects to it uh, that were really over the top. And, but it's, been, it's a process that's going on. Um, I know one of the issues is over encampments, for example, and I think the position of the administration, I'm not sure, but I understand it to be that the state doesn't allow outdoor, outdoor camping. When that's true on state property, it's not necessarily true elsewhere. And, you know, I, I think that the fact, of course, I certainly agree with Megan Green about the jail situation, but, you know, I think it's a natural give and take, and I think that, that I'm glad someone, in this case Megan Green, is actually pushing the envelope hard on doing something to un homelessness or the unhoused, whatever you call it, because it's been too long where it's just been all talk. And I'm not unsympathetic, obviously, to the plight of the homeless uh, or the, the unhoused, but we had a, an insurance company announce in the Business Journal that it's leaving Crane. Was it the Crane Company this, uh, this, this week? It's, it's leaving St. Louis. We're, we're, it, we, we seem to be out of balance that we're paying this kind of attention 
to the homeless issue, which deserves attention, when Rome appears to be, to some people, burning in some quarters? Well, if the city has $250 million, you would think that leaders would be able to spend uh, 20 30 on a homeless situation which many other cities can't afford to do. I don't know that I would devote 20 or $30 million to it. I don't know. In the game of chess, of which is everybody getting reelected, I think everybody's making the moves they think they need to do to get reelected. <laughs> Could be true. Alvin Reed, on the way to work, you saw a dead animal on Highway 44, I think, between Laclee Station Road and Jameson. And that was about a week ago. I've seen him every day for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't been removed. Twice today. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes you wonder, like, you know, you talk about Rome burning, and I know there's bigger problems, but, I mean, the same guys out there laying on the side of the highway for a full week, who do you call? Or isn't that, I mean, you know, I, do you... It's not the city's responsibility, it's not the county's responsibility, it's probably MODAS. But at the same time, if you're driving along, can't somebody take responsibility and say, like, I'm going to call, like, the city, or I'm going to call the county and say, like, can somebody get the dead deer off the road that by now probably at least a half million motorists have seen while driving either east or west right. to places other than St. Louis. That's, and that's right. their memory. They saw the arch and they saw the dead deer. Dead animals. I mean, come on. And I was so well, maybe we could have an adopt an animal. <laughs> 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 Adopt the carcass. These are not all together. Adopt, adopt the carcass. I, I was so relieved to hear you say that because I thought it was just me. Uh, we've had the same carnage on Highway 40, and it just stays, stays. there. Yeah. I think Alvin's got an interesting point about we take laughing about it, but I think if that's if you're talking about somebody coming through on the interstate, that is something that might. We're not the you know, Beverly not, Hillbillies. We're not the only ones. But I mean, it's like. You know, they would they would associate. I think I right. absolutely. Now, Modot does have an 800 number. Uh, someone's got to call that. Maybe somebody in our and I took, audience. I took no but. action to preserve. Uh, yeah. You know, so you would think Modot would have some vehicles noticing it, and then someone calling. And it if in. I noticed it, I know a lot of people noticed it. Well, let me put in a little plug because Saturday morning. I'll be in Spanish Lake with the Spanish Lake Clean and Green team, and we'll be picking up litter. And if you want to join Good us, just you. email me and uh, cwbrennan at kmwax.com. And the Cardinals are giving away Cardinals. free tickets to all the volunteers. Right, that's nice. what Paul Goldsmith will be dragging a dead carcass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think the so. Cardinal players will be helping. But do you, we, I mentioned this at the top of the show a nine o'clock start for the St. Louis City SC game against Kansas City. First playoff game in our history. Sunday night, nine o'clock, school kids, school night, Alvin Reed. I thought it was wrong. I honestly did. When that first came up, I thought it was wrong. I said, 10 o'clock Eastern time. I said, like, they must, there must be some confusion. But no, there was no confusion. We were going to start a soccer game at nine o'clock on Sunday night between two teams, not only from the Midwest, but from the same state. I mean, boy, the MLS really is thinking a lot about us, aren't they? I, well, it's, I don't, yes, I am going to say it. It's beyond... MLS. Well, it's and, and, disrespect. And, and these are this is a game that kids follow. Exactly. Well, you'd think that uh, there's no way you'd start a game at nine o'clock. I, you know? I think. I mean, I don't know a lot about the MLS, but the biggest part of the reason that these franchises, which tailors are nice enough to get, are smart enough, I should say. Um, it really have to do with international sports marketing oh. and and merchandise rights in the Western Hemisphere. And I don't think, and, and plus they don't have a lot of leverage like the NFL does or NBA or something with the networks, I'm guessing. I don't know. No, I'm sure that's, that's a good point. No, I'm and sure so that's, that's what That's, that's probably. But at the but same time. It really it's not a kid-oriented sport. No, no, and Alvin's point is right. There's no question it's not I would good. like to know yeah. that the ownership group yeah. has told the MLS that we don't appreciate that. I'm sure Please do have. not just take it, because that, if you do I, that, you'll be playing at 9 o'clock. Are, 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 are we not Kendall sure that impressive. we're just now discovering what it, what it's like to be a kid on the East Coast in the Eastern time zone? <laughs> yeah, well, probably. I lived, look, when I lived out there, but that was before they changed the time for when Monday Night Football came on, and Monday Night Football came on at 9 o'clock, and I very seldom saw the second half of any games. I think the same will be true, that people who are interested in soccer 
probably a lot of them won't come down here at nine o'clock on a Sunday mm -hmm. night. Yeah, I think it's, okay. it's not a great, right. it's not good. <laughs> I think that's all the time we have for that. However, little note that at the Luminary, it's a art museum on Cherokee. One of our production team members, Emma Bright, has an exhibit through December the 2nd. So if you're looking for something cultural, something different than this show, Dang, right. you might yeah. want to check that out. <laughs> hey, how about those letters? As one of the 10 victims of the KDHX Friday Massacre, I ask you to please consider this. If all of us volunteers committed fireable offenses, why weren't we individually dismissed over a period of time instead of 10 in one day? This itself transparently reeks of arbitrary and capricious abuse of power and authority by board and management. Thank you, Hound Dog Brown. And we heard from Trish Revis of Tower Grove. While disappointed in the decision by Ann Wagner to support Jim Jordan for House Speaker, I took the time to read her statement. She spoke to Jordan and he addressed her concerns. She compromised. We need that today, even if I disagree. Lucas Signorelli of St. Louis wrote, the population of our region is aging and shrinking. To reverse that trend, we're better served by giving tax breaks to millennials and young families to attract new residents and incentivizing existing young people to stay. Or just extend the freeze to all age demographics. You can write us care of 9 PBS 3655 Olive Street 63108. Don't forget those tweets and emails and you can listen to us on your favorite, oh, you can call the nine line, excuse me, at 314-512-9094. And you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast source, why they would be Apple and Spotify, TuneIn, and Google Play. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this edition. Go St. Louis City SC and have a happy Halloween. We'll see you next week at this time. Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.